Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. Ready to get back on our Father's Word. Book of Lamentations. The original name for Lamentations was Akai, which is to say, how? How, how did all this happen? Look around you. How did we get in this mess? Okay. And that's what this song of, sad song by Jeremiah, no doubt penned by his scribe Baruch. But it is a a book that is extremely interesting. My work on the acrostics of 11, this is the nest which brought that forth, utilizing it in the book of Ezekiel, different subject for different time. But each chapter has a, has a number of verses that will divide by 11. Okay. For example, we're in chapter 1 now, it has 22 verses. Not only that, there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet and each of the 22 verses start with that particular letter in the Hebrew alphabet. This locks in the truth in this psalm. It not only asks the question how, but it tells you why, where, and what to do about it. It gives you the answers. It's, it's a fantastic book if you have the ability to understand the acrostic uh, of each of the chapters. So, in as much as we're at verse 20 of uh, chapter 1, let's, let's get uh, to it and we'll pick it up. Remember, in, in this first chapter from verse 1 through 11, which is the acrostical number, was, was uh, the people speaking, but from 12 to 22 is the city speaking. Okay. When God scattered all the chil His children, leaving a void there. And we pick it up with verse 20 to complete the chapter, uh, chapter one of the great um, Akka, how? And it's, Akka is cried out in a way that it, it, is, a, it is a song of wonderment and, and um, requires healing, Akka. Verse 20, Behold, O Lord, for I am in distress, my bowels are troubled, mine heart is turned within me, for I have grievously rebelled abroad the sore bereaveth. At home there is as death. In other words, um, pestilence and famine are all around us in the city. Okay. Why? Well, all ten tribes went, went into captivity, the northern tribes, in the year 600 B.C., and the um, other two would go into captivity by Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the first by the Assyrian, and the next by Nebuchadnezzar about uh, 200 years later. And the city was left with whoever happened to be by. 21. They have heard that I sigh. There is none to comfort me. All mine enemies have heard of my trouble. They are glad that thou hast done it, scattered the people, the children. Thou wilt bring the day that thou hast called, called what? Called by the prophets, and they shall be like unto me. In other words, it was proclaimed that that uh, day of vengeance would come, and it will. You can count on it. Verse 22 to complete the chapter, and it's the 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Let all their wickedness come before thee, and do unto them as thou hast done unto me for all my transgressions. For my sighs are many, and my heart is faint. And, and so it is. that This is why it's so important for you to take advantage of that, to note that God made an eternal covenant with that city. He did it in Ezekiel chapter 16. He intends to set his eternal kingdom and headquarters up on Mount Zion in Judea in, 
and, and um, in Jerusalem. And he will cleanse it first naturally. But it, it is the barometer, you might say, of the end times. We come to chapter 2, and likewise, as chapter 1, 2, and 4 all start with aka, how? For you to question, stop and think a moment, what it is you're to do, how? And um, there is an interesting thing, again, you will have 22 verses, two elevens, two sets of 11, but you have a hidden mystery in this chapter. And not very few people would ever catch it. Many, many scribes have tried to correct it, thinking it was incorrect, but it's exactly how God fixed it. That the 16th and the 17th Hebrew letter are reversed. Okay. And scribes always want to, let's put them back. No, you don't do that. You leave them like they are, because the way God placed them in reverse in verses 16 and 17, there's a hidden message for you. I'll explain it when we get there. Chapter 2, verse 1. How, aka, there's that word again. How hath the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger, and cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel, and remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger? What, what his footstool, who sits at his footstool? Christ sits until his enemies are put under his foot, made his footstool. And, um, and, and certainly uh, when, when Christ was taken from us through that crucifixion, then the scattering basically had already taken place. Many people like to fix it for Jerusalem 70 AD by a little Roman general, won't fly, friend won't fit prophecy at all, not one iota, okay? So the beauty was cast down. Why, where, where did they go? Most of them don't even know who they are today. They have an identity problem. Uh, and you know, when God makes a promise, he always keeps it. You wanna count, you wanna learn to count on that. And you wanna learn to look for it because it's going to come to pass exactly as he states it. Verse 2, The Lord has swallowed up all the habitations of Jacob, that's the natural name of all twelve tribes, and hath not pitied. Do you understand what not pitied is? Remember in studying the book of, of Hosea, it's lo rohama. I mean, he, he does not pity her, he scattered her. He hath thrown down in his wrath, the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He hath brought them down to the ground. He hath polluted the kingdom and the princes uh, thereof. Um, in other words, um, the uh, fortress is gone, the walls are gone, and the children are gone. And many people know uh, where the planting of the fig tree was. It was Jerusalem, of course. But they ignore the fact, as it is written in Jeremiah 24, the same author of this sad song, um, that, um, that it would be as, as written in 20, chapter 24 of that great book of Jeremiah. There were two types of figs planted out in 1948, some good and some bad. So you want to be able to tell the difference, to know the difference, what through spiritual discernment. Verse 3, he hath cut off in his furious anger all the horn of Israel. The horn is your power. He's cut off the power. He hath drawn back his right hand from before the enemy. And he hath burned against Jacob like a flaming fire, which devoureth round about. God is a consuming fire. But your power and your strength, those that turn away from God, those that wish to take the name of God out of uh, our vocabulary, they open themselves up to much persecution, much sadness, but God still stays with. Our horn and our strength is Christ, okay? The horns of that lamb. 
And, um, uh, and, and when you call for that strength, when you call for that power, when you call for that protection, he gives it to you. Doesn't matter where you are, however the people were scattered, he always looks out for those that know the difference. Verse four, he has bent his bow like an enemy. He stood with his right hand as an adversary and he slew all that were pleasant to the eye. In the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion, he poured out his fury like fire. There is a correction needs to be made here. The colon following Zion needs to be following I. You want to pay attention to that. I'm going to say it again. The colon should be uh, following the word I, and it should read, they were pleasant to the eye, colon, in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion, he poured out his fury like fire. The day of vengeance is coming. Okay. Verse 5, the Lord was an enemy. He has swallowed up Israel. He scattered it. Okay. He has swallowed up all her palaces. He hath destroyed his strongholds and hath increased in the daughter of Judah mourning and lamentation. Well, how could that be? They lost their identity. When the ten nations were scattered, went north over the Caucasus Mountains, settled Europe, and many of them later migrating to, to America and Canada, uh, they don't know who they are. They went over the Caucasus Mountains and they're called Caucasians, but they don't know what a Caucasian is. It's one of the ten tribes. You might say, well, God lost them. No, God never lost anyone. They lost themselves. There are some of Judah that know who they are, but most don't. Verse 6, And he hath violently taken away his tabernacle as it were of a garden, like a booth, okay? He hath destroyed his places of the assembly. The Lord hath caused the solemn feast and Sabbath to be forgotten in Zion and hath despised in the indignation of his anger the king and the priest. Why? Because they're not preaching the truth. They're not speaking the truth, telling the truth, or leading with truth. And, and um, um, how, how many really understand Sabbath? Well, it's uh, the seventh day. Seventh day of what? Okay. And, and tell me this, what is a high Sabbath? You have a regular Sabbath and you have three high Sabbaths every year. And do you know something? They successfully fall on different days of the week every year. That is to say, I'll speak of Passover. Passover moves ahead one day of the week every year. Okay. And it is the high Sabbath of Christianity. But at the same time, when we changed, very few people even understand the calendar that we originally had the solar calendar. That was it. Okay. And it was set by equinoxes. The equinox, both of the spring and the autumn. And one set the new year, the other set the civil year. And um, it, is it is an exact science. It's not like moons, 28 days and then 28 and 28. You, you, but, well, most people say, well, I thought it was 30 days. Well, you're thought wrong. But anyway, when we changed calendars to what we presently have, the Gregorian calendar, we had 11 days that nobody knew what to do with. So guess what they did? They threw them away. So how can you throw away 11 days and still think you know when the seventh day is? You see, you don't, unless you go by God's calendar. And um, the point being, for a Christian, you serve God every day. Every day is a Sabbath. What does Sabbath mean? It means a rest. And if you have Christ, you can rest in Him. 
And if you don't have him, there is no rest. There is no Sabbath. Okay. So, uh, so, so be it. Verse 7. The Lord hath cast off his altar. He hath abhorred his sanctuary. He hath given up into the hand of the enemy the walls of her palaces. They have made a noise in the house of the Lord as in the day of a solemn feast. It's the enemy's religion. Okay. All sorts. Well, if it feels good, it's all right. Well, you are to get along with all religions. Well, and that's fine. You can get along with them, but that doesn't mean you should accept them. There's only one Yahweh, God of the universe, the creator of all things. And he became Emmanuel, God with us. If you want eternal life, you will follow him. Verse 8, the Lord hath purposed to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. He hath stretched out a line. He hath not withdrawn his hand from destroying. Therefore, he made the rampart and the wall to lament. They languished together. And so it is that uh, uh, the walls did go down. And they went down after Nebuchadnezzar took them captive. And do you, know, do you know how, never underestimate God. When it was time for those walls to go back up, do you know who he used to, to furnish the funds to do it? It wasn't an Israelite. And he even named the child that would do that long before his birth. He named him Cyrus. And Cyrus would furnish the money for Ezra and Nehemiah to go back and rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. It was, he financed it. God's in control. That's why you always want to pay attention to him. Because if you listen to the enemy, and if you be persuaded by the uh, persuasion of falsehood, you're in trouble. Verse 9, her gates are sunk into the ground. He hath destroyed and broken her bars. Her king and her princes are among the Gentiles. Um, they call themselves Gentiles, okay? The law is no more. Her prophets also find no vision from the Lord. Well, why, why don't they have a vision from the Lord? He withdrew. He give us all the visions right here in the Word of God. And if you don't teach God's Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse, you're out. You miss it. And, and so it is. Um, um, then naturally, uh, wh why is it that, um, uh, that God would say, you know, that uh, in the very house itself, they call themselves Gentiles. And as we learned in chapter 1, they even become chief. Verse 10, the elders of the daughter of Zion sit upon the ground and keep silence. They have cast up dust upon their heads. They have girded themselves with sackcloth. The virgins of Jerusalem hang down their heads to the ground. That, that's the outward appearance of mourning, but it's the outward appearance of do nothing. You know, that, that, that's when our people get in much trouble, when they do nothing when they don't vote, when they don't sound off, when there's something that uh, their righteous indignation dies away like a, a, a wick out of oil, the last ember fading, and they turn into nothing. So um, you don't want to fall into that category because you have something to rejoice about. We have the victory. And don't ever let anyone take that away from you when, when you believe and follow. Don't be a poor me baby. Don't sit around and moan and groan. Verse 11, Mine eyes do fail with, fill, rather, fail with tears. My bowels are troubled. My liver is poured upon the earth for the destruction of the daughter of my people because the children and the suckling swoon in the streets of the city. Um, they, uh, again, uh, they, um, uh, who sits in the, in the seat uh, of God, as it is written in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, claiming to be God even? Okay. The Antichrist does. That's why you want to be very careful. 
And when the children, why, why is it that they swoon in the streets? They, they don't know who they are. And, and this is why God would call them uh, lo ruhama, not pitied. When they don't try, he doesn't pity. If they just say, Father, help me. Father, help me to understand. That makes all the difference. Verse 12. They say to their mothers, where is corn and wine? And when they swooned and as the wounded in the streets of the city, when their soul was poured out into their mother's bosom, they were starving to death. Beloved, what were they starving for? And what are they starving for today? Truth. God's Word that gives strength and ability and the very presence through the Holy Spirit of Almighty God in your endeavors. Feed them. Don't let the baby starve. Verse 13, What thing shall I take to witness for thee? Question. What thing shall I like unto thee, O daughter of Jerusalem? How, what shall I equal thee to? That I may com comfort thee, O virgin daughter of Zion, for thy breach is great like the sea. Who can heal thee? In other words, um, over and over and over. And what is it that can heal her? The Word of God, taught properly and correctly, will heal the breach and bring joy to the daughter, bring joy to the virgin, and prepare her for the great wedding ahead. Verse 14. The, thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee, and they have not discovered thine iniquity to turn away thy captivity, but have seen for thee false burdens and causes for banishment, false messages, lies that turn away from the truth of God, traditions of men that make void the word of God and remove his blessings from you and your family that do not participate in serving Almighty God that would sit as that mourner would back up in verse 10. Just sit there. Don't listen to false Teachers, well, how do I know it's false? They will not be teaching God's Word. Verse 15, All that pass by clap their hands at thee. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, Is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty? The joy of the whole earth? Is this what they do? Now we come to that chapter that I told you about, 16 and 17, where the letters in the Hebrew alphabet of the acrostic are reversed. And it upsets many people. But um, I want you to know that in not the block Hebrew, modern Hebrew that you see, but the pale ancient Hebrew, each letter stood for something. In other words, uh, a leaf, A, was, it stood for ox, and it looked just exactly like our A today, only it was turned on its side. That was the ox head with horns, okay, the strike through. And, and um, uh, beta was, um, was house. In other words, that's your house. Gimbal um, was camel, camel, and it looked like a camel. The letter looks like a camel. The leith is a door, like the, the door of a house. And the letter in the ancient looked much like that. My point being that uh, we have an and p that are reversed here. And what is important is that you understand that p took the place of an for a reason. P and I, I, want to, uh, I'm, I want to draw you a picture mentally. Make yourself a C and like then make a heavy line like the tongue within it. It means mouth. Okay. Look, it looks like a mouth, only it's pe. Okay. 
Now, an, you must know what it means to it. It, would, it. it looks like an I. It would much resemble our English O. But the meaning of it, the letter, is I. It means look, see. When, when you're doing documentaries in, in the ancient markings and you see an an, it means there's something just ahead of you, look. Or if it has a mem above it, it means look for water right around that bend. Okay. These, th th these letters we found right here in the Americas. But why does it have P mouth first? Well, let's see if you can find out. Verse 16, P. <clears throat> All thine enemies have opened their mouth. That's the reason. It's the enemy's mouth. Do you listen to it? The enemies have opened their mouth against thee. They hiss and gnash the teeth. They say, we have swallowed her up. Certainly this is the day that we look for. We have found, we have seen it. In other words, when you let the, the mouth take you over, the slick talker, the deceiver, when you listen to their lies, when you listen to their falsehoods. Why did God reverse this? He didn't want you to miss it. He wanted you, his elect, to especially know that don't let the enemy romp it over you. You, through spiritual discernment, can recognize a lie when you hear it. And you know the conniving of the enemy. They smooth talk over everything with the mouth. And unfortunately, too many people believe it. Because they're not sharp enough to catch the very devil's tongue when it's in use. So you want to beware. And know that Satan works against God's children night and day. Watch the mouth, my friend. Especially the mouth of your enemy. You'll see it on television quite often. Now, why was Aen put here in verse 17 then? Why were they reversed? Meaning the eye. He means for you to look. You see with understanding. The Lord hath done that which he hath devised. He hath fulfilled his word. Have you seen it? Do you know what his word was? Open your eyes and read it that he hath commanded in the days of old. Again, well, how is that? Open your eyes and read it. All you have to do is check it from the days of old. Maybe a good place to start for this chapter two to get a better understanding would be to know about Lo Rohama. And she would later be called Rohama, which means loved. For you want God to love you. Open your eyes and observe. He hath thrown down and hath not pitied. There again is not pitied is lo rohama in the Hebrew tongue. And he hath caused thine enemy to rejoice over thee. He hath set up the horn of thine adversaries. God set it up. He allowed it. Do you know why God allowed it? You did. You didn't do anything. You didn't vote. You, you allowed the enemy just simply to move in and take over. And God says, hey, if, if you want it that way, you just learn your little old lesson. Now, naturally, when you um, uh, watch the enemy's mouth and open your eyes and see it and ask God for his blessings and comfort, you're going to get it. But most won't. They will sleep on sweet Charlotte and, and uh, follow in until it becomes so obvious. But what God expects you to do is to exercise your right, your righteous indignation, and speak out. Don't mourn, don't mope, rejoice in the Lord that He has provided a place for us. It's in His Son. And within His Son is rest. That's the Sabbath, the true Sabbath. So always enjoy that. Don't ever let anyone rob you of it. So. Do you understand why God, when he has that perfect acrostic, takes the 16th and the 17th letter and reverses them because he wanted the mouth of the enemy to be seen by you?
in that order, but calling it so much out of order that a child could say, oh, look, these are out of place. Must be something special there. Got it? All right. Verse 18. Their heart cried unto the Lord, O wall of the daughter of Zion, that city, let tears run down like a river day and night. Give thyself no rest, let not the apple of thine eye cease. What, what is the apple of your eye? It's the pupil. Boy, do you protect that. And have you ever learned the great song of Moses or at least read it in Deuteronomy 32? You are the apple of God's eye. Meaning, if you love him and you return that love and work at it, he protects you as though you are the apple of his eye or the pupil of his eye. And, and so it is. And um, <clears throat> this naturally follows that 17th verse, which has to do with the eye. Open it and, and uh, don't let the tears run down like a river too much that you can't see. And let your eyes be open and see and observe and observe the enemy and give him no rest. Verse 19, Arise and cry out in the night, in the beginning of the watches. Pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up thine hands toward him for the life of thy young children. They faint for hunger in the top of every street. You feed them the truth of God's word. Don't let anything come in that way. They're starving to death for hearing the real true word of God as God would have it taught, in order to know that um, God protects His own. God takes care of His own. God feeds His own. God supplies His own. And He leaves nobody wanting. What a beautiful chapter. We'll finish it in the next lecture. Don't miss it, all right? These acrostics are beautiful. These elegies, which is to say poems, are fantastic. And do you know something? They are written in such a way that the acrostic locks them in, just like the Maserat. And they can't be changed by man to lose the beauty and the significance and the meaning that Almighty God wished you to receive from them. All right, don't miss the next lecture. Listen a moment, won't you please? The Book of Ezekiel. What a fantastic study, this book of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel that covers, if you would, those vehicles, those circular discs. In the Hebrew, it states very clearly that that whirlwind with the color amber traced back to the Hebrew, highly polished bronze. What an exciting thing that God's word informs us on all things. Ezekiel one of my favorite prophets of the Bible, probably more written, not probably, but absolutely more written on what will happen in the millennium age than even the book of Revelation. Ezekiel guiding you through it, what God will expect at the final battle, Armageddon and Haman Gog, recorded in this great prophecy. I know you're going to enjoy it, the book of Ezekiel. And there we are back again. Let's have the 800 number, please. 1-800-643-4645. That number is good from Puerto Rico, throughout the U.S., Alaska, Hawaii, hey, all over Canada. If the spirit moves, got a question, share it. Won't you do that? Please never ask a question about a particular reverend, denomination, or organization. We do not judge people. Our Heavenly Father is the judge of judges. He does not need our help in that. We are to discern who we associate with and so forth, but we do not judge people. Those of you that listen by short wave around the world, it's always a pleasure hearing from you. Your announcer at the end of the hour will give you our mailing address. Again, always a pleasure. Now, you got a prayer request, you don't need the number, you don't need an address. Why? God knows what you're thinking. He does. He's the heart knower. And you know something? You're his child and he loves you. He may not love what you do always, but he does love you. What does he want from you? He wants you to return that love. He will never force you to. 
He will never try to trick you into loving him. Why? Because that would be fraud. That would be fake. He wants the real thing. He wants your heart. He wants you to love him. That must come from you. It pays great dividends to let him know that. Father, around the globe we come. We ask that you lead, guide, direct, Father. Touch in Yeshua's precious name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Okay, and questions. Erwin from Alaska. My dad was in Korea, and before he died, he didn't think he was going to heaven, and I had a lot of trouble trying to make him understand. I do not understand why he was thinking that way or if he made it to heaven. Well, you, don't you worry about him. If he was with uh, m our group up at the Chosun Reservoir, he's already been to hell, so he's not going there again. All right, you can count on that. <clears throat> Unfortunately, you've got a lot of false preachers. That, um, And it is true that North Korea was a bloodbath. Uh, a lot of people were killed there. A lot of killing was done. A lot of false preachers don't understand God's word for example, uh, Psalms 144, teach my hands to war and give me the strength and the ability to defeat my enemy. Okay. That God expects us to protect our children, our nation, and our right as Christians to protect. But you get some lily-livered preacher that's not familiar with God's word, and he calls that killing. It's not. It's not murder. Okay. It's defending our nation. And there were many good men died in Korea, and a lot of men came home and, and had to face up to some. We broke the back of communism, that and, and, and Vietnam broke the back of communism. It's kind of trying to rear its old ugly head again. But don't you ever worry about your father. God will take care of him, okay? Timmy from Mississippi. Will the rapture occur before the abomination of desolation? No, it will not. Okay. As a matter of fact, it will not take place after the abomination of desolation. How could that be? There is no rapture. The word's not in God's word, doesn't exist. It was made up in the year of our Lord, 1830, by a mentally disturbed little lady. And two preachers were standing by and they said, hot dog, we got it now. Any moment doctrine, boy, we can really preach this and it'll give people a safety blanket. It's just that God's word doesn't say it. Uh, and from California, when Satan and his angels are kicked out of heaven, many think they will just free fall. I say they will come in vehicles. You got it right. Uh, Ezekiel describes pretty, gives a pretty good description of those ships. Did Satan and the fallen angels use the spacecraft when they came in Noah's time? They had to have transportation. They impregnated women. Uh, Diane from New York. Uh, is it all right to pray directly to Jesus? I heard you say that the Bible is a novel. Please comment. Well, is it all right to pray? When Jesus was asked, how, how do we pray? What did he say? He said, this is what you do. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You pray to Almighty God but always pray in Christ's name. Okay. Now, you can talk to the Lord if you want to. That's fine. But in your prayer, you want to always address it to our Father. It's all right to address it to Jesus, uh, to, to, to talk to him. Why? Emmanuel is God with us. Okay, and um, you, you have heard me say that the, the Bible, with qualification, is like a novel. It's about one man's family. It's, it's about the family of Eth Ha'adam, through which Christ would come. And when you go from generation to generation, um, uh, we have a book in our library, I think we still have it, One Man's Destiny, and um, it, it, it kind of lays it out for you in that, right, written by a lady, okay? She, she wrote it many years ago when it was unpopular for a woman to be an author. 
uh, believe it or not. So it, it just has the initials and her last name, but she was quite a lady. Uh, Jack from Virginia. Jack, uh, the Mark of the Beast tape, which we offer is, we'll answer your questions. Uh, Rick from West Virginia. My question is, should I hear the voice of God my Father every day? And how do I get to that point? I read the word, I read the word and I pray and I seek my Father's face, but I don't hear him as others say they do. And I desire this so much, my heart hurts. Please answer this if you can. Please pray for me. Well, we'll do that, but you know, who, who are these people you hear that talk to God every day? Hmm? You know, I've, I've heard a few preachers that say, well, I talked to God this morning. They're lying to you, okay? It's, it's an old trick of one-upmanship. And, and they just call prayer talking to God. But to literally, as you're talking physically, phone, the Greek word phone, talk to, hear from, hear the noise of God, that is really a rarity, okay? So I, if I were you, I wouldn't, uh, you hear from him because he wrote you a letter. It's called the Bible. And that is his letter. But don't let some of these preachers that play one-upmanship with each other. Well, God told me where to park my car today. Well, let me tell you, if you haven't got enough sense to know where to park your car, God's not going to help you. Right? That's just the way it is. God only helps you on stuff you cannot do. Okay. Then he will step forward if you ask him and assist you. But uh, what I'm telling you is, is you pray to him and when you pray, he hears you. And when you feel the warmth of the Holy Spirit, he touches you. That's the hand of your father. So don't, don't, um, don't, don't expect to be like some of these would-be preachers that uh, play one-upmanship, okay? Um, Scott from Tennessee, once saved, always saved, but we do need to repent of our sins. What if we should die before we had a chance to ask for forgiveness that day? Would we not be saved? Well, I take it from this, Scott, you sin every day, is that right? Well, shame on you, all right? I know we all fall short, but I wouldn't admit it if I sinned every day, you know, we'll just repent for it. Now, it is written that <clears throat> righteous acts cover a multitude of sins. So uh, you'd be covered, no, no problem, but, but do repent occasionally, all right, when you know you've sinned. Uh, Don from Oklahoma, several times you have mentioned Ezekiel 44:25 in reference to one helping an immediate family member during the millennium. Do you know of what reason God will allow us to go to a family member? For example, if a family member refused the plan of salvation while in the flesh, can this person be helped during the millennium? Absolutely, they're on the wrong side of the gulf. They didn't make it. But then many might say, well, you mean that's a second chance? No, it's not a second chance. With what's being taught today with a bunch of one-upmanship preachers, they haven't got a prayer of a chance coming out the gate. They're going to be deceived by the false Messiah because he, you know what his message is? I've come to rapture you out of here. And they're going to jump on his wagon because he's supernatural, looks like Christ, claims to be Christ. That's what Antichrist means. And um, un unfortunately, we've got a lot of them that are going to be deceived. This is why Christ, when... He speaks to the election in Mark 13. He says, don't let someone coming in my name deceive you, claiming to be a Christian preacher. He didn't send them. Okay. So if they don't teach God's word, you want to be real careful of it. Okay. Uh, Jesus, Jesus, I'll say, from Georgia, is it possible to be deceived by Satan? What are the scriptures that say that? Well, there are a lot of them that say it. Okay. One good example would be for you to read Matthew chapter 4 when Christ shows you how not to be deceived by him. Get a real scripture lesson from it. But the fact that you can be deceived, you can learn by reading 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 when God makes it very clear if you want to believe a lie, he'll even help you out. He'll send strong delusion. If you want to believe the rapture doctrine, if you want to believe 
uh, he who taken out of the way will let until he be taken out of the way, um, then uh, go ahead and believe him. God will even help you out. He'll send strong delusion. But you hold the line and you stick to the truth. And don't you let anybody deceive you, including Satan. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Robert from Tennessee. My wife passed away three years ago and I have been miserable. I want to know if I will see her when I pass away. Well, you certainly will, okay? And you will even um, have a right to... Um, be with her and, and uh, help other family members as it is written through the millennium. Ezekiel 44, verse 20 through 25. Uh, small boy, Joan from Georgia. If you have sinned, can you repent and go to heaven or do you just die and go to hell? But for a young boy, that's a pretty heavy uh, statement there. No, you can repent and go right to heaven, okay, when, when after the great white throne judgment. You just know that God loves you. And son, let me tell you something. God doesn't wake up every morning and say, I just wonder what little child I can zap today. Okay? He loves everyone. We're all his children. And he really wants to help us do what's right. Okay? So he gives us many opportunities to find the truth and on repentance. When, when he says, when you fall short, when you repent, he takes an eraser and just blots out everything you've ever done bad and just throws it away. And he doesn't even want to hear about it again, okay? Toby from Oklahoma. Is it wrong or bad to read the Bible in public? For in Matthew 6, 56, it says, When you pray, do not pray in public, for you would be like a hypocrite. So when you pray, go into your room and pray in secret. Is it the same for reading the Bible? No. And, and don't, don't miss the real lesson Christ is teaching there. He says, don't, don't go out in public and make big, long, loud prayers showing what... Uh, this is where that one-upmanship I was speaking of earlier comes in. Not, not praying to reach God, but praying to impress people about what a close walk you have with God to be able to just talk to Him, you know. Uh, God doesn't like that. You see, the word hypocrite in the Greek means play actor. They're play acting. They're play acting Christian when they're not really one. Okay. They're just being man pleasers. Uh, so it's, it's all right to even, you know, you can pray anywhere, anytime. You don't have to pray out loud. God can read your mind. So, but... Do it in secret. Don't do it to put on a show. That's what it's talking about. Wayne from New Mexico. Thank you for your faithfulness. You are welcome. When I read the Bible and I see the Word of God, I say, Father, instead, I just have a problem with the Word God. Do you think that is a problem that I say, Father, instead? No. If that's, if that's the way you want, it'll fit. Okay? Christ never called Father God. When Christ spoke to the Father, he always called him Father. Okay. And uh, from Georgia, is it considered bad to ask God for something direct through prayer? No. That's, that's what he wants you to do. Now, I would advise you first, God says, uh, you know, I take care of the lilies. Man, they got better. They're clothed better than even Samuel was. And I, they're, every little old sparrow that falls, I know about it. And he says, when you do my work, I know what you have need of. He said, don't worry. This is what the whole thing is about. Don't be a worry wart. You do my work, and I'll add all these things onto you. So be sure what you ask for is not something you can go out and work and get yourself. He expects us to take care of business that we can handle, and he'll take care of the part we can't. Okay? Quite frankly, like in a ministry, he'll furnish the bricks, but you've got to do the building. Okay? You've got to do the, the work. Uh, Bob from California, you are welcome. We enjoy bringing you the ministry. I have to qu question one. Why is there a true north, a magnetic north on a compass? Is it because of Satan's rebellion? 
in the first earth age, did that cause the earth to shift? I, I think it did, and I teach that as, as a supplication. For true north is exactly 90 miles away from magnetic north. And all of we pilots in the old type aircraft before it was done by um, radio now and direct, uh, um, directional finders and so forth, um, you always had to, if we had, there was an old saying, east is least and west is best. In other words, if you were going east, you subtract four or five degrees, whatever the map called for for the area you were within. Or if you were going west, you added four or five or six degrees um, because there was that much of a deviation pulling off from true north, okay? Do you think we will be able to communicate with animals in heaven? Well, you can today, okay? You, I don't mean, you know, you don't, you're not going to be able to literally talk to them, speak to them, but you don't have to. When you speak to them now, they understand. When, when they understand from the tone of your voice, and they really develop quite a vocabulary also, your a pet will. And they know when, one of the first things they learn is food. Okay. When you say, do you want to eat, you'll see the ears go forward and yeah, now that sounds like a good idea. But they, just as a point, they, they, have, they understand quite a lot. And um, of course, you have some people that their animals outsmart them too, you know, or smarter than they are. Sue from Tennessee. Oh, this is quite long. Let me see if I can get down to um, Pastor Maria. It took me, you told me to look up Jeremiah 4 to find where God said he had destroyed the world before. And I, I read and reread it repeatedly. I do not see it. Well, why didn't you? Okay. You know, you might read verse 18 again where he said, my people are a little sottish. That means stupid. Okay. And then he goes on to say, what he was doing was threatening them. He said, hey, you better get your act together because I destroyed this whole thing once before and don't tip me, I can do it again. It wasn't Noah's flood, which is probably you're taking it for in the fourth Jeremiah. He said, I destroyed everything. And that's what he did to the first earth age, all right? Uh, in addition, where would I find a Bible that would have the translations correctly written? Was is a fairly simple word, but if it is mistranslated, this is why that I ask that you have a, a Strong's Concordance or a Companion Bible, okay? And it gives you the direction to know how to find out. Men did the translating. God didn't, okay? God gave the original manuscripts, and man has translated and translated. And there are errors. Why? Because men are not perfect. And a man, if he has a conceived, preconceived idea, he cannot help allowing that to work into the situation. That's why the Masara and acrostics such as we're studying today lock in the scripture where man can't change it. Okay. Uh, Julie from Virginia. Um, Question, I know it says we will sing the song of Moses in the end times. My problem is I'm not as gifted as some in memorizing. You don't, you don't have to memorize it, dear. All you have to do is read it with understanding. Okay. And um, so when the time comes, you will have it. You don't have to memorize it. Uh, uh, some people do. But for, the thing is, is for you to know what it says, the meaning of it, and how it applies to you. Dennis from Kentucky. Can a free will person become a Kenite spiritually from le leaning towards the faults and, and teaching such? No. Kenite is a race. And regardless of what you believe or lean to, it cannot change your race. Okay, That was decided before your birth at conception, okay? Uh, you were gonna be the race that you are, and that's it. God created all the races, and he likes them the way they are. But um, Kenite, when you say that Hebrew word, it's 7017 in your Strong's Concordance, Kayan. 
And it means exactly that. It's, it's the offspring of the first son, Cain. Okay? They're his lineage. Uh, Pastor Murray, I no longer have a church home, so I can, can by words, God's law, send my tithes and offerings to you, or should I take them into a church building? Now, you, where, where you pay your tithe where you're fed God's word, okay? Wherever that is, here or in a church building or wherever, wherever you're fed the real true word of God, you want to keep that coming to you. Therefore, you tithe to that organization or church or whatever. It's, uh, that's God's uh, command, but it's just common sense also. Um, if, if, if somebody, just, just to take it and drop it in a house that's never taught you, you would be robbing yourself, okay? Nora from California. My question is regarding Passover, Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. If we stay at home and take communion with the chapel's TV program and not gather with the congregation, does this lack an effort, does, uh, does, does this lack of effort displease our Lord? for one of the elect, not, not if there's reasons for it, and you're, you're there in person anyway through the ether waves, no problem, okay? God's pleased. I'm out of time. Hey, I love you all because you enjoy studying our Father's Word. Most of all, God loves you for it. When you study His Word, you know what? It makes His day. And when you make His day, boy, is He going to make yours, and that's nice, okay? We are brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we, if we have helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Once you do that, bless God, He will always bless you. However, there's one thing really most important, and that's this, that you stay in His Word every day in His Word. It's a good day, even with trouble. Do you know why? Because Jesus, Yeshua, He is the living Word. Hearing God's Word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's Word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you.